Hey, we're back. This is part three, so we're gonna do this with a different style. I'm gonna be trying to do some more animations with the episodes to make them more interesting. I'm also gonna change up my editing style a little bit, just to make everything more entertaining for you. The first video got 60 views, the second one got about 120, so let's aim for 180 on this one. Also, I'm nearing 500 subscribers, so if you could subscribe, that'd be great. Anyways, let's get into the video. So who is our subject today? Well... The Eyeless Dog. One of the most iconic enemies from the game, and also one of the most dangerous. This enemy is annoying. Haunting the nights of almost all moons, other than March and Vow. These things are not to be reckoned with, and they... They have cursed my party, especially Kitty. I've made the decision to change up the way that this video will be structured. Instead of just remaking it, making a model, and then showing off a render, I'm going to try to make a model that's similar to the one from the main game, and then kind of come up with a monster that fits the model that I made. I also worked with a modder to help get my model in Source Filmmaker so I could animate it. Hopefully that won't turn out badly. I split the modeling process into four stages, and I'll try to bookmark it in the uh, video timeline, so you can skip ahead if you'd like to. But let's get into the first stage, modeling. The modeling process is the most simple to follow, plus I already described the two modifiers that I use in the Thumper video. I also did a little bit more in depth on the Giant video, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much here. I will say this though, for this one, I decided to go at it with a different technique, moving around faces a lot more to create musculature and make it look more detailed, instead of sculpting it by hand, which is what a lot of people will do. But to kind of hold on to the low poly effect that Lethal Company has, I thought this would be a better take. Anyways, let's see how this looks. I started at the modeling process with a cube, applying the necessary modifiers and setting everything up properly. Then, as I stated a minute ago, I started moving around the vertices, faces, and edges to create a nice body and musculature for the thighs. I then stretched out a tail and worked on the legs. Once the legs were in a good spot, I realized it looked like an emu, so I decided to stretch out the body a little bit more. Once this looked nice, I started working on the front legs, creating them just the same way. I moved around some more vertices and created a divot in the back for the back fur that I would create a little bit later. I then began work on the head. I decided that an interesting take on this recreation could be that this could be a Cerberus-like dog. I thought that would make it look a little bit more interesting anyway. I struggled a lot to get the head shape and size to look right. Creating three heads made it really difficult to figure out the spacing properly. Once I got it to a nice shape, I, s I created a nice hole inside of each head for the mouth where I could put teeth later. I then fixed the legs as I realized that they weren't all the same like length and it made it look weird. I pulled back the body a little bit more and it made it look nicer. I then spent a little bit looking for different videos to research on, figuring out a couple of things before I applied some modifiers for shading the smoothness onto the model. I then started on the back fur. This is just a simple plan that I created many subdivisions on. Then I moved around the faces and vertices to make it look like fur. I deleted a bunch of the bottom vertices to save on resourcing power. And then I created one tooth. I'll put all the other tooths on later once I have textures created, and that's about it for the dog. Annoyingly enough, I forgot to record the footage of me creating the normal map or the bump map for this model, although I do have some footage of me applying it to the model. A bump map is basically just a texture that changes the way that light reflects off something, making it look like it has more depth and feel to it. This is used to create like fur and texture and fabric and stuff like that, but uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much it for this stage. Sorry. As for texturing, I started out with a basic texture, and then I started painting on the details of the mouth, darkening it to make it have more depth. I tried to add this streak along the back, but it looked weird, so I removed it. I then added some extra details around the face and back, that was about it for the body, so I started working on a tooth texture. I realized the uh, shape looked kind of weird, so I shrunk it down, and I added a bunch of lines to the texture, then smudged all of it to look like it was a dirty tooth. I then copy and pasted the teeth all around everywhere, all the heads, everything. I then started to work on the back fur. This was just a simple one color texture, add some dark, and that's about it. The final process of this model was adding a rig. This is basically an inner skeleton that we can apply to the model to tell the model how we respond to it by moving the bones. So if I move the leg, it should move the leg. If I move the tail, it moves the tail. If I move the end bone on the tail, it moves just the end of the tail. I took a little bit moving around the bones on the body, legs, tail, then I created bones for all of the different heads, then bones for the mouth, that way I could make the mouth open and close, and I was quite happy with this. I don't have too much experience with rigs though, so it was pretty janky. 